morning. Big day today. Hey, fellas. Today's the big day, huh? Good morning. Good morning. Top of the morning, my lady. Good morning, big day, huh? Morning. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Mr. Hibbert. Today's a big day for me. Really? Wow. Good for you. All set for the big day? Hi. Today's the day. Hey, fellas. How about that game last night, huh? What game? There's no game last night. Big day, though. Gotta go. Hey there. Morning to you. Good morning. Hey, how's it going? Morning, folks. Good morning, Denise. Good morning, Mr. Hibbert. Big promotion's being announced today, and I think I know who's going to get it. Mm-hmm. You think I'm gonna get it? I suppose. Who calls for the CEO every Wednesday? Who is marrying his daughter? It's me. Yeah, I've got work to do. Right, but you think I'm gonna get it, right? Announcements at 10. Righto. It's a happy day for me. I'm gonna be the president of the company. Well, before we begin, some of you may have heard through the office Scrapevine, who I've appointed as our new president. So I thought I'd just make it official. The new president of Nagel Industries is, big surprise, Ken Daly. What? Pardon? What did you just say? Ken is the new president? What? I don't know how to say it any more clearly. Ken is the new president. Somebody else say something. Hibbert, you're making an ass of yourself. OK, I can hear. I just can't believe what I am hearing. Now, uh, can we move on? How is this possible? How, 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 how? I mean, I have done everything in my power to suck up to you to get this promotion. My god, man, I am engaged to your daughter. Yes, but uh, Daly here is engaged to my favorite daughter, Daphne. What kind of a man has a favorite daughter? Now, uh, moving on. And uh, if you do have a favorite, then you should label them favorite and not favorite. Hibbert, listen. Ken Daly is the new president. <laughs> you, you didn't really think you were going to get it now, did you? <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. You gave me very strong reason to think that I would. In fact, you used the words, between you and me, Nelson, you are going to be the next president of this company. <laughs> oh, that. Right. I lied. <clears throat> Go to hell. Pardon me? Go to hell, you bastard. Now, that is quite enough, Hibbert. I swear I will kill you. Security. Oh. Restrain oh. him. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are dead to me, sir. You are dead to me. The only reason I don't fire you is that you are engaged to my daughter, Constance, who, although she is a great disappointment to me, is still my daughter. You don't know the man you're dealing with here. Listen. I will leave here now. But I will leave here of my own free will. Intercom, people can hear you. Really great news about Ken, huh?
I'm going to give Nagel a piece of my mind. Are you sure you want to do that? I want to see Nagel now. I'm sorry, you'll have to wait. Okay. Excuse me. I I've read all of these. Do you have anything else? No. Then I'm not waiting. Listen, Nagel, I've got something I want to get off my chest. Your treatment of me is completely unacceptable, and I just... Would you stop staring at me like that? Okay? Because the point still remains, how dare you? How dare... All right, fine. Is that the way you want to play? You want to play the staring game? Fine. Two can play the staring game. Okay, I can't play the staring game. You win, all right? Big man, you win, all right? The, the, the point still remains that you had absolutely no... Okay, look, maybe this was a bad, I, maybe this was a bad idea. Sir, sir, you dropped this. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I'm afraid you're mistaken. Well, I saw it fall from your coat. Thank you.
Nosebleed. Really bad nosebleed. So that's the woman that found the body? No, sir, that's a man. Really? All right, well, let's roll the tape back and see the actual killer again. This killer is one tough customer. He's gonna be tough to catch. Look at him pull himself into an air duct. He must have been working out for months. Maybe we should let the feds handle it. Sir, unless you cross the state lines, this is a local matter. Well, what am I supposed to do? I mean, we don't have the first clue as to who this guy is. Well, from the video, we've been able to establish that he's 5'11 and a half, 183 pounds, dark hair, right-handed. Thanks. Mr. Nagel's life was recorded 24 hours a day by sophisticated hidden surveillance cameras. So why wasn't anyone watching the Nagel office monitor at the time of the murder? We found it better not to watch him when he's alone. Why? <laughs> and he knew he was being recorded? Oh, yes. He wanted us to watch. Well, I think we have enough here. Uh, Jimmy, pull the patrol car around at the loading dock, then call me down. Sir, should we try to find that screaming woman? Man. The screaming man that found the body? No, we've got this tape and this printout. Let's focus all our energies on catching this killer. Gangster girl, your lover's got my guns firing. Gangster girl, Johnson's patented inside move, but this is where they excel in defense. We interrupt this game for a live UNB update on the murder of Randall G. Nagel. Here's Kathy Lacanoli. Although authorities have not publicly stated if they have a suspect, police have released surveillance camera footage showing the grisly murder. Nobody told me they had security cameras. What's the point of pulling an inside job if you can't get inside information? Now we'll have to switch to plan B. 
You remember. The one we only use if something goes terribly wrong. Yes. And I'll need double the money. I'll have to spend the next couple of years out of the country. Meet me on the 23rd, 12 noon, Mr. Tiny's. And don't make me switch to plan C. You stole my heart away. You gangster girl, gangster girl. I'll get it back from you someday. Wow. When you get out of jail. When you get out of jail, gangster girl. Yeah, we can work on it tomorrow. Same okay. time tomorrow. All right, All right see you guys see you tomorrow. Okay. 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 You've reached Constance. Please leave a message. Hello, Constance. It's me, Nelson. Nelson, your fiance. Pick up if you're there. Pick up, please. Look, I, I can't talk long. This call's probably being traced. I just wanted to let you know that, despite what the police may believe, I did not kill your father. I'm gonna try to make my way to Mexico, where I will remain until I can prove my innocence. But until that time, I am a fugitive from the law. I must live in hiding, never able to rest, never a moment's peace, starting at every noise. What's that, I'll say? Oh, only an alley cat toying with an empty tin. <laughs> How like that mangy Tom am I? Forever search. No, I was here. can clean up. Is everything all right, sir? Oh, yes, nothing to worry about. This isn't my blood. Thanks. Evening. Detective Arlen. A guy covered in blood showed up at La Trattoria. You think it's a lead? No, nah, our guy's too smart. Pulled himself into an air duct, didn't he? I never would have thought of that. La Trattoria. Is that that nice place with the really thick veal chops? Yeah. Tell you what, let's check this out. Have the chef make whatever the suspect ate. I want to get into this cat's head. Also, have him throw a couple of those chops on the grill. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I'd like to make a reservation. Hi, how far will $36 get me? Look there. All right. How far will this get me? I don't care what direction, I just need to get to Mexico. There you go. Thank you.
Uh, that was jazz, some sort of jazz ensemble. I don't see the album cover here. I'm not usually the DJ, but I'm trying my best. Uh, now here's some uh, news off the m news machine. A man matching the description of the murderer of Randall Gene Agle is believed to have stolen a black Jeep Laredo with flame detailing on, on the sides. <laughs> Miss, this is your stop. What? This is Crow's Nest. How can you tell? Oh, it's Crow's Nest, all right. There's the broken branch, the ditch, flat tire. I've been driving this route for years. There's nothing out there. There's no town. Oh, Crow's Nest isn't a town. It's mm -hmm. a proposed town. But then the depression came along, and anyway, this is your stop, so get out. Crystal Ball, Detective Arlen, Cleveland PD. Do you know this man? No, I have no idea who that is. Not surprised, it was just a hunch. Shall I pull the car around back, sir? Not just yet, Jimmy. My instincts tell me uh, we might get a lead if we see some of the girls dance. Why don't you go get us a table down front? <laughs> okay, before we continue on, I'd just like to make a special acknowledgement to Nelson Hibbert, whose procurement department uh, has increased its efficiency level by an astonishing 30% in just the last week. I I don't know what you've done to get the bugs out, but congratulations, Nelson. Hey, where is Nelson? I thought he was just here. I don't know. I think he, uh, I think he went to the washroom. Yeah, I'm sure I saw him. Anyways, uh, going on the next door to business. I'd like a room, please. What? 
I I'd like a room, please. Sure. Single, double, junior suite. A uh, single room, please. What? A uh, single room, please. What? I'd like a single room, please. Twenty nine ninety five. In advance, Mr. Cow. Oh, uh, Callic. 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 Cal Crescent in Hilmington. Here's your change. Is, um, that your car? Yes. Of course it's my car. Why would I be driving someone else's car when I have my own perfectly good... <sighs> Jeep. Room for all. Thank you very much. shower when I heard all the sirens and I was wondering what all the commotion was. Is that him? Can't be. The person we're looking for is six feet tall, 180 pounds. That woman's nowhere near that size. I think it's a man. Really? Yeah. So anyway, I figured I'd come down and see what the trouble was, you know? You know, because what with being completely innocent and all, it's, you know, only natural that I should be curious. That's him! Ha! Look, behind you!
We've got a problem. You remember that guy who walked in on me in Nagel's office? Herbert? Yeah, I guess so. He's been trailing me since Cleveland. He's everywhere I go, and he brings the cops with him. No, that's uh, it's impossible. I just was at a meeting with Hibbert. You must be thinking of somebody else. Whoever it is. Not Hibbert. Whoever it is, he's getting in the way. I'm going to get rid of him. Well, you can do whatever you want. I just want you to admit that it's not Hibbert. Look, Daly, if you sent this guy after me to set me up, let me remind you. If I go down, you go down. Captain Hughes, I want to know one thing. Are you sure it was him? I'm positive. Uh, he wounded a bunch of my guys. He did this somersault thing onto a squad car while shooting. That's him, all right. I've seen him pull himself up into an air duct. Really? Well, great. He's out of Cleveland. No longer my problem. <laughs> Let's go, Jimmy. Sir? Sir? The feds would like you to stay on the case since you've been so involved as far. And the FBI would give you all the backup and resources you need to continue your investigation. That's just great. What kind of resources? Unlimited. Unlimited, huh? Uh-huh. Jimmy, how long would it take to get from here to Cincinnati by helicopter? I don't know, about half an hour? Great, get one. I got a sister in Cincinnati I haven't seen in eight months. Let's go! OK, Charlie, what are you carrying today? A whole shipment of tainted ham. How do you feel now? How do you feel? Fine, fine. What happened? You ate 10 tainted hams. We pumped your stomach. You're very lucky to be alive. Thanks. Just need your name for our records. My name? Mm. My name. My name is Jones, Mr. Enema Bag Jones. That's not your name. You're simply lying to me. Right. Sorry. My real name is Harris, Dr. Helen Harris. No, that's my name. You're probably still a little out of it from the toxins. I'll check back on you in 15 minutes. <sighs> Must escape before police find me.
Dr. Uh, Martin? Yes? We need you. I'm sorry, I'm busy. Look, my partner's having a heart attack and you're gonna save him. Let's go. Fine. He's ready. Clear. And... Don't feel so bad, Doc. You did all you could. You know, guys, I really need to be alone right now. I think I'll take a walk. Yeah, right. He's taking it really hard. So you won't tell me who you are, where you're going? Nope. I like that. You know how many assassins it took to kill JFK? One? Nope. There were no gunmen at all. Kennedy's head just did that. Really? Yeah. I call it the no bullet theory. Hey, maybe you could help uh, uh, with a problem a friend of mine is having. This friend of mine was the first person to find his boss stabbed to death. And now everybody thinks I did it. I mean he. Two things. One, one. The man who killed your friend's boss is a Cuban assassin. Nine out of ten times this is the truth. Two. Two, that means they'll come after you with everything they've got. Including man-made viruses. Oh, God. Oh, is, is there any way he can defend himself? Absolutely. Absolutely. Many common household items can be used as deadly weapons. Friend. I could kill you right now using two tea bags and some wax paper. How? I can't tell you. Fine, I, I understand. But this is great. You've, you've been a great help to me. Look, do you have, have by any chance a list of Cuban assassins? A list? Well, isn't that a coincidence? Uh-huh. That I should pick up a hitchhiker and he should ask me about a list. You can tell your friends at the post office that they can suck my ass! Hmm? Adios, comrade! Ah! I'll never catch you. You're just too damn good. I give up. Arlen, we got a lead. Some hospital in Columbia, Missouri says they picked up a drifter off of a westbound train from Indiana, pumped his stomach, then the guy disappears. Let's follow this up. Mexico. I mean, nowhere in particular. Look, I just need a ride, okay? All right. Hop in. Hi. Hi. I'm Lynn. Oh, my name's... Uh -huh.
Nelson, my name is Nelson. Nelson, Nelson, it's nice yeah. to meet you, Nelson. Nice to meet you, Lynn. So, um, not from around here, are you? What makes you say that? Well, you know, it's a small town. I've lived here all my life, and I've never seen you before. Oh, then, no, I'm not from around here. Where are you from? Oh, that doesn't matter. The real question is, where am I going? Oh, where are you going? Can't say. Oh, okay. I understand. Thanks. You know, I really appreciate what you did, but you probably shouldn't be picking strangers up off the highway. Oh, well, you know, normally I wouldn't, but I'm a very intuitive person, see, and there was something about you when you were standing out on the road that I trusted. You seem so... safe. Mm -hmm. Well, no, safe isn't the right word. You seem more, uh, like, um, harmless, innocuous, feeble, Thanks. weak. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. But it's very friendly of you to be concerned. You know, I don't have very many friends. Really? That surprises me. Well, you know how small towns are. Everybody's in such a rush. The hurly-burly of farm life. It's just hard to meet people. Well, there must be a lot of men interested in you. Oh, I, I, no, you know, I, I no. hope you don't mind me saying this, but you're a very beautiful woman. You think so? Yeah. Well, for some reason I'm not very popular. Who knows why? Who can map the human heart when... Lynn? Lynn? Are you alright? Uh, Are you okay? Uh, did I have one of my spells again? I'm guessing you did. You'll have to forgive me. I'm slightly narcoleptic. Uh. Oh my god. You're hurt. We'll go back to my house and I'll bandage that cut. <laughs> Maybe I should drive. Don't be silly. You don't know the way. That looks pretty bad. We probably should do something about that. First, we better disinfect it. I really don't think that's necessary. It's really just... Ow! Oh, my sorry, eye! Sorry, 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 Ow, sorry, burning, sorry. Burn, Ow! Burning! Burning! Ow! Burning! Burning! Burning my eye! Ow! Here, here. Ow! 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 Please stop! Oh, sorry, Please stop! Sorry. Please I'm just stop! just making things worse, aren't I? No! No? No, it's me. Really? It's these damn eyes. Oh. They're just too sensitive to chemicals and filthy towels. You know what? I'm feeling much better, really. Much better. Maybe just some ice for the swelling. That'd be great. Ice? Yeah. We can't afford any ice. Huh? <laughs> there, there. There, there. I'm sorry. It's just our refrigerator is broken and we have to eat canned food because we can't afford to fix it. That's awful. Everything is falling apart. Gee, sure sounds like you folks could use some help around here. Yeah. Well, I better be going. Wait, Nelson, maybe you could help. I don't follow. Well, um, maybe you could work here for room and board. Work? Uh, what? What kind of work? Um, well, you know, odd jobs, handyman kind of stuff. I can't do any heavy lifting. Um, backpack? No. Look, you don't want me around here, all right? Look, I, I'm trouble. I'll bring you nothing but heartache. Nelson! Oh, where will you go? I don't know. Down the road. Maybe I'll scrounge a meal from a dumpster. Find an old cardboard box to sleep in. Are you 
you sure? All right, I'll stay. But just for a little while. Oh, good. You can stay here. Mm -hmm. This was my brother Billy's room. Mm. So your brother's gay, huh? <laughs> gay? <laughs> no, Billy is not gay. <laughs> I mean, if you knew how funny it is, he would think that. <laughs> okay. No, no. He's a Marine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> He's about five foot nine, brown hair. Yeah, I think I saw him. Kind of an idiot. No, he's smart. Super smart. Most likely a genius. Well, it's not the same guy. The guy I saw stuck his head in a water machine. Yeah, well, that's him, all right. He was here a while ago. Sure he's not an idiot? Quite sure. Siren stuck again. Nelson. Lynn hired me to be the new handyman. Well, she's got a big heart. Oh, you must be your father. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I have to glue this fence back up. Third time's the charm. Lynn, I think we need to talk. <sighs> I am starving. And ham? Oh. This cracker is so filling. I don't think I could eat another bite. All right. Suit yourself. Nelson, I know that Lynn told you that uh, you could be our handyman, but I'm going to have to let you go. Daddy. No, that's all right. I understand. I just want to thank you, though, for your, your graciousness, your warmth, and your hospitality. This has been the happiest time of my life, and whatever happens to me from here on in, I, I want you to know that I will never forget these past four hours. See, I'm, I'm just a simple country banker, and, well, lately it's been impossible to make ends meet with all the low interest rates and the, and the federal controls and all those damn wealthy farmers trying to shut me down. Hey, maybe I could be more used to you down at the bank. I, I do have an MBA from an Ivy League college. Well, I mean, it's not strictly Ivy League. I mean, but it was near Harvard. You had to take the same bus that you took to get to Harvard. Not that anybody who went to Harvard ever took the bus. <laughs> <sighs> Normally, it's not a good idea to take a total stranger, a hobo, put him in a responsible position at the bank, but, well, damn it, I am the owner of Fred Holden's savings and loan, and I, I think you're telling the truth. I know you didn't make it through life as a handyman, so tomorrow you start at the bank. Great. Well, tomorrow's a big day for me. I better get to bed. Thank you, Daddy.
Yes. Fred? No, it's me, Lynn. Oh. Ooh, that light is so harsh. Do you mind? No. Can I come in? No! Don't move. Just there you are. It wouldn't be proper. Oh, Nelson. You're such a gentleman. Thanks. Now, if you could just pivot a little clockwise. Sure. Why? No reason. Um, Nelson, I just wanted to say good luck tomorrow, and I'm really happy that you're staying. Oh. Thanks, Lynn. Me too. Good night, Nelson. Good night, Lynn. Jimmy, apparently the killer hasn't been to this French restaurant either. Well, sir, we have no reason to believe he's anywhere in New York. Well, maybe that's what he'd like us to believe. Jimmy, call Ticketmaster, get us two tickets to that Moby Dick musical. Moby. Yes, sir. Uh, better yet, make it four tickets and call one of those escort places. Get us some dates. We don't want to look too conspicuous. Mm-hmm. Oh, what, Jimmy? See if they have a blonde Asian girl. See, we went through a pretty big modernization back in 1958. That's when my father died. That's when we replaced the ink wells with the ballpoint pens. Oh, very impressive. See that chair? That's new. Very nice. Well, frankly, I miss the old chair. But time marches on. So, your uniform's in the locker. Uniform? Morning. Oh, Gav, this is Nelson. He's uh, replacing Mrs. Evans. This is a stick up. Oh, God. Please. Please don't kill me. I'm just begging you not Nelson, to kill me. Nelson, Nelson, it's me. It's Lynn. I was just joking. <sighs> me too. <laughs> I thought I'd stop by and I'd bring you some lunch. Oh, that's great. <laughs> See that you're still open. Well, no thanks to you, Farmer Brown. I see you finally got a replacement for Miss Evans. You know you can't hold out much longer. Your note's due in 30 days. We'll make it. We're doing just fine. Maybe so. But it'd be a shame if people around here started to lose confidence in the bank, if certain facts became public. What facts? What do you think of this, young man? Oh, the bank. Wow. Well, since you own the newspaper, I'm not surprised they'd print your lies. Sell me your share of the bank now, and your investors will get some of their money back. Sure will be nice to tear this old bank down and plant me a fresh crop of corn. 
You will never grow one single ear of your filthy corn here. Well, we'll see. To the broccoli field, Jedediah, and hurry. Oh. Why does everybody look so down? Well, Farmer Brown was just here. We may really be in trouble this time. The notes come and do, and business is way off. We're gonna need a miracle. I need it fast. Damn them! Oh, I wish I could have been there for you. Oh, honey, just having you here, lying on the floor unconscious, was comfort enough. Thank you, Daddy. Can't get used to this chair. I'm so happy you're staying. I think you're really helping out Father at the bank. Everything's so wonderful. I know. And that fence might stay up if it doesn't rain. Nelson, I think I'm falling in love with you. That's a bad idea, Lynn. Why? This is hard for me to say. Mm -hmm. As much as I'd like to stay here with you and your father, I, I can't. You see... I'm the prime suspect in a crime that I did not commit. The crime of murder. Lynn? 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 Prince, in this grisly work that we do. I know that. This is one exception. Contained within the tragic murder tape of millionaire Randall Nagel mm -hmm. is this often requested mm -hmm. bit of comedy relief. I know that. Please stop staring at me like that. I don't care if that shopping mall's been in your family for generations. Soon that land will be a pasture for dairy cattle, and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, that, my friend, is a very wise decision. The papers will be ready to sign in the morning. The killer is still at large. If you have any information about this or any of the cases presented this evening, please call us on the number flashing on your screen. Well, I wonder how the customers will feel when they find out they've had a murderer working behind the teller's window. Well, Lynn, that's my story. You've got to believe me, I didn't do it. Well, I consider myself a pretty good judge of people Except for that one guy who said he was an advanced scout for an alien invasion force, but it turned out he just wanted to get in my pants. I just don't think you're the kind of person that could commit a murder. Thanks. That means a lot. I'm starting to have some very strong feelings for you. The sort of feelings I've never had for anyone that couldn't further my career. Oh, Nelson. We just got a call. Hold it. Those are flesh and blood actors up there. Give them the respect they deserve. But, sir, the killer... Jimmy, you can tell me at intermission. I'll meet you at the bar. Have a gin and tonic waiting for me. And a Mai Tai for the lady. Go. How could you let this happen? What happened? This million-dollar award. <laughs> oh, that. That's no big deal. Who's responsible for this? What, the reward? That was, uh, my idea. Thought it was a good way to throw suspicion off me. Do the police suspect you? No, of course not. With stunts like these, they're never going to. Look, just calm down. No one's going to find you. I'm sure nobody even knows about the offer. Boy, you know what I'd do with that million dollars? I'd buy me a new gas station with solid gold pumps. Just be at Mr. Tiny's on Wednesday. So you're sure the murderer is in that bank? Most definitely. <laughs> Why are you laughing like that? Like what? You know, weird, creepy. 
It's a uh, allergy. <clears throat> Uh, Jimmy, notify the locals that we're coming. On my signal, we move in and apprehend the suspect. Right. I want to close my account. Me too. What's this all about? Your teller there is a cold-blooded murderer. Yes. Yeah. Where'd you get that idea? From the front page of this newspaper. Well, this is nuts. Now, this newspaper's owned by Farmer Brown. He's been trying to shut us down for years. Edgar, your father got the money for that house you're living in from this bank. Jacob, do you remember when you needed money to start that men's jewelry store? Well, you didn't get it from Brown. You got it from us. Uh, yeah, I had to foreclose on you, but, well, it wasn't a good idea, was it? Men in this town just don't wear jewelry. Everybody, look, the money from this bank is in that town. Now, you're not going to risk it all just on the basis of one stupid rumor. Yes, we are. We are. I don't care. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, just wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, Nelson, set these people straight. You're not a killer, are you? A killer? No. No, 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 no. I'm an alleged killer. Yes, I did threaten the man, and my prints were all over the murder weapon, but that's just because I pulled it out of his skull. what you know about the murder of Randall Nagel. I can't. My daughter loves him, and, well, I can't betray my daughter. There you go, Jimmy. You can't fight love. It's the most powerful of all emotions. That's it. We know you know who he is and where he went, so tell us. I can tell you this. The Nelson Hibbert I know is incapable of murder. Not morally, but physically. Who? This is the man we're looking for. Well, I thought you wanted Nelson. The man you want came to the bank right before the police got here. I haven't seen him before or since. Uh, Lynn. Uh-huh? Look, we're, we're gonna be on the run together, right? Uh, and right. let's face it, I think there's some pretty strong feelings going on yeah. here. And uh, there's just something I want to get settled. Oh, don't worry, I have condoms. No, that's not it. It's not? But good. Now, I, I just need to make a phone call. Oh, okay, all right, fine. All right. I'll go browse the convenience store. Okay. All right. And Lynn. What? This may get dangerous. You better pick up two tea bags and a sheet of wax paper. Okay. Constance, I have something important to tell you. Oh, I wish I could do this face to face, but. You know, since I'm still on the run and all, I've met someone, and 
I think I'm falling in love. I'm sorry, it just happened. She's wonderful. The way her eyes light up a room, the way her laugh fills me with joy, the way she flicks her tongue when we kiss. Perhaps I've said too much. Please try to remember. Freeze! Put down your weapon. No, you put down yours or I blow a hole through this guy's head. Well, looks like we got ourselves a Mexican standoff. Not really. Mexican standoff is where no one has an advantage. In this case, I could use this guy as a shield, kill you, and then kill him anyway. My mistake. What if I put down my gun, walk away, and you don't kill me? What's that called? That's called, you're a stinking yellow coward. Stinking yellow coward. Looks for me. You're not going anywhere. Hey, listen. I don't know what kind of trouble you're in, pal, but trust me, you're making a big mistake, all right? I happen to be the most wanted man in America. No, you're not. Well, you can believe what you want, but you're gonna feel pretty stupid when you find out who I really am. I got your tea bags and wax paper. Thanks. Get rid of her or I'll kill her. And I bought more condoms. Hey, thanks for the condoms. See ya. Nelson, I left my home for you. Well, now you can go back. See ya. Why are you acting this way? And who's this? Oh, just another meaningless stranger just like you. Cold son of a bitch. Look, I don't mean to hurt you. Ow! Would you let me finish? Okay. I'm just trying to tell you that love is dangerous. You shouldn't run away from love. It's like a gun pointed at your head. You're not making any sense. He's trying to tell you that I have a gun pointed at your head. No, he's not. Oh. See? Well, how did you possibly expect me to understand that? It was so convoluted. No, it was pretty clear. No, it was not clear. People it's, don't talk like that. I said it's like a, there's no, a gun pointed you said at your it's head. like yes. a gun pointed yes. at your head. Yes. You should have said there is a no, gun the like is pointed at your head. You drive. Oh, bad idea alert. Get in. Come on. Okay, we'll get right on it. Thanks. Detective Arlen, a desperate man fitting the killer's description just stole a catering truck outside Oklahoma City. He was with a woman and a man that looked like he worked in a pizza parlor. They could be heading toward Mexico. See, Jimmy? And you said a manicurist had no useful role in a police investigation. Let's move out. I am telling you, I am a terrible hostage. I am a wanted man. Yeah, the police think he killed Randall Nagel. No, they think I killed Randall no, Nagel. No, no, they don't. Yes, they do. Police are to sketch of Nagel assassin? What a terrible likeness. This doesn't look anything like me. No, no, it doesn't. It's me. Look, you and I both know I killed Nagel. You're trying to tell me that you killed Nagel? That everybody knows you killed Nagel? Nobody thinks that I did it. Nobody is after me. I quit my job. I, I, I abandoned my life. I mended a fence for no good reason. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Stop the charade. I'm not stupid. I know you've been trailing me ever since Cleveland. I don't know what you are. Some kind of highly trained G-man or part of some super secret elite force of international super cops. Wow, super cop. I just thought it would be up to me to get a job to support us. Once we get to Mexico, I'm gonna ransom you for a fortune. But don't get me wrong. If I have to, I'll shoot you. No, you're wrong. You've got this thing wrong. I'm, I'm a nobody, all right? I'm just an ordinary guy. A guy that has just risked the life of the most wonderful woman in the world. I am an idiot. I am a complete I'm, idiot. No, you're not. If no. I really believed that, I'd have to pull over, hogtie, and shoot you in the back of the head. Well, it looks like secret agent 10 of that elite thing you were talking about has finally met his match. Pull in up here. Detective Arlen, they've been spotted. They're nearing the border. They just turned into Mr. Tiny. 
Don't pull them over yet. They might kill the hostages. Tell them to use air support to follow them, but keep their distance. We'll set up roadblocks, then move in. I haven't been miniature golfing since I was a kid. You know something, Mr. Killer? You're not such a tough guy. You're just an old softy. Gee. Park over there. All right. I tried to tell you. Did I have one of my spells again? Yes, you did. But those of us that chose to wear seatbelts are fine. Shut up! Get out of the car! If either of you speak, I'll kill you. If you try to run, I'll kill you. What about signaling people when we're not speaking or running? Yes, I'll kill you for signaling. Uh, but if I hadn't brought it up, you'd have never said anything. Huh? Hey! How about you? What? Do you understand? Oh, like I really feel open to asking you questions right now. You're awake. Yeah, for a while now. I've been carrying you. I thought you wanted to. Lynn, what? I'm sorry about getting you involved in all this. You know, possibly getting you killed and ruining your father's business. Well, it would have gone under anyway. Great, then everything's okay. Well, not really. I still might get killed. Great, I'm sorry about that. It's all I... right. Oh, hmm. sorry. Did you bring the money? I brought the money. Hey, that's Ken Daly. I work with him. He's gonna find a way to capture the killer and get us to safety. Shut up. Oh. That's Ken Daly. I work with him. I, I heard. I heard. Open it slowly, Daly. I've never trusted you. I may be a cold-blooded killer, but I would never marry just to further my career. Hey, you don't know what it's like out there. There you go. $500,000. Oh, and, uh, here's a passport. Iraq? I asked for a Swiss passport. Oh, they, they didn't have any. You'll never get away with this. Of course I will. It's simply a matter of killing both of you, taking the money, and escaping through this hatch, which runs under the Rio Grande to Mexico. Where you'll find a car waiting with provisions. Open the hatch, Daly. Why? You got what you want, just go. I will, just as soon as you open the hatch. Thanks for saving my life. I'm not gonna save your life. As soon as I kill him, I'm gonna kill you too. No, you're gonna save me. You double-crossing bastard. Hey, you know what I think? I think Daly was in on this thing right from the start. I think he hired you to kill Nagel. Of course he did. Nelson, you solved the mystery. Yeah. Hey. What? What do you say you and I get out of here? Okay. Detective Arlen, we really should do something about those gunshots. All right, let's roll. Oh, 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 oh! Commandeering this vehicle, official police business. It's an emergency. Move it! Go sit on that bench over there. Hope you're seven ready. Come on, Take 
Give me that. You see, it's like I said, he is stuck. I think his head is probably wedged between the ladder rungs. We know you're in there. We've got you surrounded. Up the ladder. Let's go. Super cop, I'm holding hostage. Are you saying you have a third hostage we cannot see? You're not a super cop, are you? You're just an ordinary idiot. No, I'm, I'm, I'm. No, I'm sorry, Lynn. I'm not a super cop. Well, I kind of figured I just didn't want to embarrass you in front of the killer. All right. I may not have any super cops, but these two human lives are valuable, right? Sorry about that. One of our boys got a little overzealous. All right. But if one more cop shoots me, I'm going to kill at least one of my hostages. We don't want anybody to get hurt. I'm already hurt. Right. We don't want anybody else to get hurt. Agreed? There has to be some way out of this. What do you suggest? Give yourself up. How does that help me? I don't know. Tell the snipers to get in position. I can hear you! Sorry. All right, here's my idea. Safe passage across the border. A million dollars in cash. And a helicopter. And a helicopter. Wait! Why? I've always wanted to ride in a helicopter. Your helicopter is on the way. I don't want a helicopter! It's on its way. Cancel it! We can't cancel it. We've already ordered it. If I even hear a chopper, I kill someone. Let go of one of your hostages, and we'll cancel the helicopter. I'm serious. Ha! Ha! What the hell are you doing? Just doing my job. I do, however, have a few questions. Yes? Your expense account shows you spent some time in New York City. Yes. Well, Bob and I are going up there next week, and I was wondering if you could suggest a show. <laughs> of course. Moby the Musical, a must-see. Beauty of the Beast was terrific. Really? The candlestick looks just like a candlestick. <laughs> teapot looks a lot like a teapot. Is that right? Yeah. So, I guess you'll be taking your million-dollar reward and leaving me forever. Oh. Uh, okay. Sir? Oh, there's, there's no need to thank me. I just did what any good citizen would do. Uh, uh, that's our blanket. Uh, okay. There you go. You don't have to leave, you know. Really? Yeah, really. Oh, great, great. Because, you know, mm -hmm. something happened to me back there with that gun pointed at my head. Mm -hmm. I had, um, I had a, uh... An epiphany? Uh, no, no. It was more like a realization, but on a grand scale. An epiphany. No, no, it had, like, religious proportions to it. You're describing an epiphany. Well, whatever it was, it made me realize how shallow my life has been. You know, clawing my way to the top of the corporate ladder, willing to step over anybody that got in my way. It was empty, and it was ugly. But out there in Metcalf with you and your father, life was real. You know, I, I felt for the first time that I, I belonged somewhere, and I think more than anything, I'd like to go back there and 
save your father's bank, marry you, and settle down. I hate Metcalf. Oh, we could stay in Cleveland. You know, I can jump back into the rat race either way. Cleveland sounds good to me. But we get married, oh, right? right? Oh, good, good. Yeah. 